All right, guys, we are live again. Search for Guru. Uh, this time I have Brother Bomani Tayimba with, with us, and we're just going to discuss how to travel to Africa. Uh, and the reason why we just we have to break it down and make it simple for you guys. You know, I think um, I talk to a lot of people who have not traveled to Africa and they try to make it very difficult. So uh, we're just going to, like I said, make it simple, simplify it um, and make it easier. And it's, it's just such an easy process, but a lot of people like to make it more difficult than what it, from what it really is. So, Brother Bomani, thank you for coming on this morning. Absolutely, absolutely my brother. Uh, greetings. How are you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, before we jump in, Brother Bomani, tell people what you do because, you know, people need to know that, hey, if they, I guess, can't plan a trip for themselves, there's people like yourself with services that would do everything for them. All they have to do is just show up and meet you at the airport. Am I right or correct? Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Uh, uh, we have everything I organized from my uh, A to Z as far as uh, getting you uh, prepared to traveling and connecting to the African continent uh, by means of preparation. So I want to go to an introduction of, uh, of what I'm talking about so uh, you know, people get a clarity. I'd say um, you know, Ghana is a popular destination. And, and you know, anyone can buy a ticket, go to Ghana, and connect with people, and uh, people show them around. But the tour program that we have, uh, we include conference call, we include uh, networking, going through um, literally all of the, the preparation details, uh, uh, packing, luggage, visas, uh, saving your, your, your money, focusing on your journey, getting prepared by, by, by studying, focusing, and also um, connecting you with the different routes of how it works as far as flights. So some folks, uh, you know, you're not familiar with traveling to Africa, uh, there's different ways to get to the African continent. You have you know, direct flights from you know, New York to, to Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have direct flights from, um, you know, from New York to uh, Togo, mm -hmm. Ethiopian Airlines. Yeah, and then you have, you have your, your connections in uh, Europe uh, to, uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, France, uh, Paris, and also uh, Amsterdam. Uh, that's Air France and uh, KLM, and that will get you to Ghana. Um, you have South African Airways and so on. So you know, when we structure a flight schedule, we structure it to where all of us meet together in one location. And uh, we all get to you know, Ghana, so you're literally connecting with uh, people with the same mindset that have an interest as you. And then from there on, we have a full itinerary that we take you around the country. Okay, now okay. you have an uh, echo. You have me on the screen. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, it's not me. Hold on. Is that okay? There we go. All right, that's better. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I mean, what we want to do is demystify the, I guess, preparation or getting to Africa. I mean, and, and Bomani, let me ask you this why do people make it, or they make it seem okay? So, why do they make the process as far as traveling to Africa more difficult, so difficult? All right, but when it's time to go to Europe or Asia, to them, it's simple. Yeah, sometimes people feel like they may have more services available to them to travel to countries like uh, the Caribbean islands or, um, or Europe. And they may not feel like uh, there's, there's, there's packages, there's services to get them to Africa. You know, so, and it, it's, not a, it's not a popular journey for um, uh, our brothers, uh, Africans in the, uh, the diaspora. Uh, so what we're looking to do is making it popular by providing the services because the more of these services and information that's out there, the clearer it is because people, you know, as an African in the diaspora, you're gonna have some kind of, you know, well, not all of us. Some people are gonna have some kind of notion that, you know, we we have a link to Africa, and you know, maybe I should think about going and things like that. But those things start pondering in your mind, and then based on what people see, then then they continue. Like one of the big things is we have over a thousand uh, videos on YouTube. Those videos are just being around in different countries, Ghana, Ethiopia, Brazil, on a day-to-day -day base based on our tours, and based on what you, um, you know, you're, you're seeing day to day, that give you clarity of how it feels and how it looks. So you're getting a more of a, a visual sense. Uh, and then we're doing conference call 
where we go maybe one hour, one and a half hour into from basic details to advanced details. And it kind of builds the mindset along where, you know, you get more conscious of, 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 it, of, uh, of traveling and, and listening because, and now, and now, you know, now the more and more we go through the same details, the clearer it becomes. So I'm a person that believe in straight up just training and going through a process of running through the same information to a person over and over to where it becomes clear and simple. That way, when you get on a journey like this, you connect with other brothers and sisters, uh, and then you're able to, um, to really enjoy your journey. Because a lot of times you're going to travel by yourself because your peers are going to say they're not down with that. So I, I try to lay out as much details as possible as far as the schedules, the details as far as on the website. And, and as far as our photos, you know, lots of photos on Facebook. I have all of the galleries so you can look at the photos on a day-to-day -day base on each tour. And then you just see what you know, things physically look. So that's, um, we're doing as best as possible to, to really just take it to a different level and share with you top level documentation. Okay. Now, let me, somebody in the chat room, uh, Michael said, now, people who make it so difficult to travel to Africa, but make it easy. Oh, did the brother step away? Yeah, step away for a few seconds. I'll tell you. Okay, all right, no problem. So, the, um, people who make, I mean, people who make it seem so difficult to travel to Africa, but make it seem so easy to travel to Europe and other places around the world. Are they making it difficult or are they just trying to find an excuse to not go? What do you, what do you think? Uh, I would say it's a combination of two things. Great question. Um, there's that fear in the mindset based on all of the documentation people may have seen when they were younger and all of the, you know, the, the insult, um, as far as, uh, you know, as far as Africa or African people. Uh, so it's, it's a psychological mindset. And then at the same time too, you're taught glorified history about how great all the European nations are and how they conquered the world and how they invented civilization. And, and, then, and, all of, and then, you know, throughout your life, you see these movies, Greece, Rome, uh, France, England, and, and so on. And, you know, so some people develop a mindset. So if you don't, if you don't, replace that with the, like consciousness as far as reading into African roots culture, uh, connecting with an environment like a conscious community or being a part of study groups, you know, that's going to be a mentality. Um, and I see it all the time, you know, when I'm around as an IT technician, I, I do business uh, in different schools, different people office, um, people homes. And you know, sometimes I wear shirts like this, or I give you know my flyers out because uh, I market both of my business, my IT service and Africa tour business, you know, together, um, uh, you know, as you know, as an enterprise. And you know, you, you and then you 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 present the people, and some people are more open, but you know, some people also appreciate a little bit of information that they're getting, because a lot of the times people are not conscious about people who have went to Africa who enjoy the great time, someone who saw about living, doing business, someone who has investment uh, in, 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 in treasure bills and investments in, in land, investment in, in networking, and people have his own staff and crew there. It's, it's a lot of things that, um, you know, that, you know, you won't be aware of, you won't be aware of until someone like really to share it with you. So um, this Bill in Africa for the Africans towards an investment experience, it's just ground up and basically you know, feeling that you have nowhere but to grow because as long as you present yourself and you keep doing business at a high level, more and more people are going to open their minds because this is by divine faith. A certain percentage of us, it's in our DNA to return to the African ancestral land to either, if it's, even if it's just for to tour or, and, you know, and then some of us, it's for us, our divine faith to return to our ancestral home to do nation building, live and do business, and also connect with our brothers and sisters in the local African country where we're going to. So it's, uh, it, it's something that, um, you know, with proper connection, it can open somebody's mind up to where they see that this is the best opportunity for them to live and do business in Africa versus, uh, you know, versus retiring and then, you know, burning off all their retirement here in America. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned something as far as Africa not being a popular destination for a lot of Africans of the diaspora to travel to. But from what I noticed, when I travel to Africa, 
I see a lot of Europeans there, a lot, touring and going to the villages and all this other stuff. Why, why is it that with them, it seems like they have no problem going? Because I see more of them more than us, to be honest with you, more yeah, than the diaspora. Exactly. We have the most fascinating history and fascinating culture, and we have some the most incredible countries where you have so many things you can enjoy as far as tourism, travel, and adventure, more than anywhere else you know, you know, that you can think of. I've been to six continents, uh, at over 30 countries, and the, the countries in Africa, like Ghana, Ethiopia, they have too many things to offer, and that's why you have, and white folks know these things, and they appreciate the level of those things, and they appreciate the hospitality service, and then they see a way that they can make money. Uh, so it's, you know, so a lot, it's divided along all lines. Uh, so it's a situation where, uh, you know, based on, you know, where we were as a people 40, 50, 60 years ago, and the limitations of us traveling. So that's where you, you, and, you and I come in place where we're boosting up travel and we're, we're showing people a living example of what it is to be in an, in an African country and how to connect to the spirituality, the culture, the roots, and so on. Okay, so let's, let's just get to the basics. Like for someone who's interested in traveling to Africa. Right. Now let's start off with um, passport and visa. Um, as far as getting your visa, What's what's that process like? Let's just break it down and make it easy. Let's, 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 let's start with simple. The first thing before you get a visa for a country like Ghana, you must have a uh, U.S. passport. And then we talk about U.S. since um, you know that's where based of most of the people we're dealing with. Uh, so once you have your U.S. passport, um, and if you want to go before you want to, if you want to talk about passport, we can go a little bit before the visa if you want because we talk about traveling. So uh, I'll, I'll start off dealing with the passport. That's fine. Um, right. Yeah. So. <coughs> Uh, for those who don't have a passport, the main thing is um, you have several different options. You have online options where you have a list of the different criteria. And most of the things you're going to need is your hardcore documentation, uh, birth certificate, uh, driver's license, and you know, all your documentation to show where you live at. And you know, because it's a serious process, so they're going to do a full check on you. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you want to do is uh, you want to go to the, the, the travelstate.gov website and print out all the details and apply for it. If you don't have one level of documentation, then um, you, know, you have access to another uh, to make it work. So uh, instead of going on into full details, but that's basically what people have to do. And then once you uh, get all your documentation, you take it to your post, post office, um, that process passport, and you send it out. And then once you get it back, then you're looking at applying for your Ghana visa. So now what we have is um, on our website, africaforeafricans.org. Once you go on there, Whatever tour you're looking at, say you're looking at the Ghana tour, you click on the Ghana link, you have a visa link on there. It will tell you to, to click on a link to print out two to print out applications. So you'll fill out one application and then you make a you sign and date it and make a copy of it. You'll get two passport status photos and staple one on one and staple one on the other one. Uh, you need to provide a flight itinerary. When you're traveling with us, we'll give you your flight schedule itinerary. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Go ahead. Uh, so um, that, 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 that cool. Okay, I can okay. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So, so as far as getting your passport, uh, there's a bad angle. Is one of the screens open on your end? Let me close everything. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, so as far as getting the passport, now I get a lot of brothers who reach out to me who say, Hey, I want to go to Africa because I want to leave America. But they might have, they might be on probation, they might have a felony, uh, you know, they might owe child support. I don't know if you know, but in any of these situations, can you get a U.S. passport? Yes, I'm familiar with it. Uh, for the most part, some of them you can, depends on the level of the situation, and some of them you can't. Um, hardcore felonies is a no. Uh, a whole lot of cash uh, owing child support is a no. Passport. So unfortunately, there are unfortunate, un unfair restrictions. Uh, but there's always a process to what you have to work out to to, you know, to get your passport. Even if they say you got to cut the child support down from a few thousand to you know one thousand. You know, so th those are things I've seen based on this re research and the reading details. Based on people who call me and ask me these questions, and this, you know, then you just you don't want to discourage anyone. You want to always know that. Um, they can't hold you as a prisoner in this country because that's what they're doing if they do all these things. But 
it's what it is. It's you know that's 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 one of the, the rough things about law. Once you know, once a nation set things in law, then they can use that law to to you know to restrict you and imprison you. So um, unfortunately, some people won't be able to get it. But as far as the people that are able to get it, um, yeah. And then the ones who can't, I would say just do your best to work whatever you have to work in the system. Um, and if you got access to a lawyer and see what you can do because everything is somewhat reversible. The system, unfortunately, a lot of times wants some kind of money and some kind of cash. Right. Out, uh, which we have seen. That's how this uh, nation of, you know, stay rich. Um, you get charged for everything. So you know, beyond that, uh, you know, getting the, you know, getting the, you know, once you have that passport already based on whatever the situation and, and you take care of that, then, uh, you know, you follow our details on the site and you know, things like for Ghana visa, you have an option of a three month visa, which is uh, $60 or you have an option of a visa that's for multi-entry, which is one to five years and you can go unlimited. That visa is $100. So you just write, uh, you just get a post office money order, put it in the package and then put whatever few documents they need. And then the main thing about when you send out uh, visas is you always want to put a prepaid return envelope with tracking in, in the package and then have your out and then have your outgoing tracking to where you can track the package to the embassy or consulate and then um, then you have your tracking number once they finish and they scan it you'll be able to track your package back so these are the simple process to having that and uh, and you know and it takes uh, literally seven to ten days uh, so a full two weeks including the preparation to get your visa taken care of it absolutely now um, one thing the yellow fever vaccination now I go on these um, a lot of black travel groups on Facebook, and they will freak people out. Because from my understanding, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna play stupid, even though I know the, the rules. All you need is a yellow fever card, for the most part, uh, especially if you're traveling to more than one African country. I think, from my understanding, if you're just going from America straight to Ghana, and if you don't plan on going to any other African countries, you might not even need a yellow fever. Uh, uh, the yellow fever, I mean, in the shot or whatever, or the car. But I just say get it just in case you plan on traveling to other African countries once you leave Ghana or leave an African country. You have people scaring people saying that do not set foot in Africa unless you have yellow fever car, yellow fever shot, your malaria pills, tetanus, uh, hepatitis, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G shots, um, you know, AIDS shot. Uh, you know, dish caloric, all this, this other shot, flu shots. Can you tell people just what do they need specifically in order to enter African countries? And are they wasting money by getting all these different pills and shots and immunization? Yes, they're wasting our money. But yes, uh, right now, uh, we have a current tour. It's 40 of us uh, going to Ghana, Togo, and Benin. So you have to get three visas. And, uh, you also have to have a yellow fever card. Uh, Benin Embassy uh, wants you to send in a copy or send in the original yellow fever card with your visa application. Ghana and, and Togo just want you to show it at the point of entry. Uh, so that's the only thing that's required. And if you just feel that you just have to have some malaria pills, I guess you can do that. But let's tell people to follow protocol as far as uh, just eating certain food and don't just eat anywhere over any street or anywhere. Um, make sure you drink uh, purified, clean, or bottled water. Uh, and just uh, don't put a whole bunch of fragrance and things on yourself and draw, you know, and draw mosquitoes towards you. Um, wear something more uh, neutral. And then you know, at night, um, I guess you can make sure you're covered as good as possible. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, all those countries are fine. You have no problem. You don't even have to do that because people actually, what I, what I take and what I do, I tell them nothing. I tell them I'm from Jamaica and it's like walking across the street when I'm going to Ghana, Togo, and Benin. It's right in the middle of the tropics. And um, you know, only the other thing I recommend uh, everyone do is just stay hydrated and build their immune system several, you know, at least one or two months before they leave by just you know, having a nice, uh, healthy diet and just reduce as much junk, sweet, sugar, and uh, you know your usual poisons. Okay, so now they get the visa, comes back from the embassy, says about about two weeks, you know, in total time. 
Uh, you also have options where you could do a uh, rush visa as well, but that costs uh, more of a larger premium. If you're like me and you just do everything last minute, which is which is going to cost you. <laughs> yeah, that's a waste of money. So I just tell people that. Yeah, 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 because I got to get my visa. Yeah, I'm, I'm just last minute with everything, just unfortunately. Um, also, too, I want to say some countries you can either get a visa at the actual port of entry. So I know like Senegal, if you have an American passport, uh, you don't even have to pay for a visa, it's free. Uh, I wanna say Kenya, Tanzania, you get one right at the airport. South Africa and Namibia, if you don't have a passport, I'm sorry, if you have an American passport, you know, you, you don't need to pay for a visa. Uh, I think Ivory Coast, you get a visa at port of entry, but Ghana and Benin and Togo, you have to get it before you show up to the country from my understanding. Well, I know with Benin, I got it. I got it before. Um, I actually uh, showed up. I got it. I sent my uh, passport to the embassy in Washington D.C. Um, so you have that as well. So you got your passport, got your visa. You're looking for tickets now. Or usually now, another thing too, what people have to understand: before you even get a visa, sometimes you have to have your trip planned because they want to know where you're staying. Some of the questions they want to know where you're staying. Uh, in the actual country. Uh, is, can you explain that? And like, how do you explain that to your, uh, your clients that you take on the tours? Absolutely. What I do is uh, I have everything typed up on our visa requirements. Um, people that's on there, that's you know, all of the visa required. The flight itinerary, we uh, send, you know, send everyone the flight itinerary. And then we have all of the hotels and everything on the uh, tour itinerary. So literally, once you click on the tour link, you have 100% of everything that you need to, to complete all your visa process and also be clear on the tour itself. Okay. Uh, perfect. Now, somebody who wants to travel alone, okay, or doesn't want to go part of a group, who's solo dolo, um, as far as buying the tickets, how would you recommend them buying a ticket to a specific country? Like, I get coaches all the time, like, literally, how do I buy a ticket to the country? I'm like, you know, the same way you buy a ticket to go to Europe. You know, you just go on GoDaddy or Momondo. That's what I, I use Momondo because I get great deals on that site. I, sure. how, how would you recommend someone to, to buy a ticket to actually go to a, a country in Africa? Exactly. I can get them on one website that's a good option is asaptickets.com. Say, so example, okay. go to Ghana for the low, low, the best deal. Um, you have a connection that takes you from the U.S. to, to Istanbul. On Turkish Airways, and then back, and then um, once you are, um, you know, and, and and back the same route, and it's it's you know it's a longer, and you have to overnight in Turkey, but it gives you the best deal uh, possible. Yeah. So that's one option, and then uh, a lot of times I just use the airlines directly, uh, Delta.com, and so on. Okay, because I know with me, uh, the first time I went to Senegal. You know, it now you gotta tell people this. It's the cheapest to fly Turkish Airlines sometimes, but it's the most inconvenient because I flew to Senegal from LA on Turkish Airlines. I had to fly from LA to Istanbul, which is like a 20 hour flight. Like it was a long ass flight. It was like maybe 16, 17 hours. Had an overnight layover, then from Istanbul back over to the car. Uh, me personally, I, I, I tell people usually if you fly out of New York, or DC, that would probably be your sometimes your less expensive route, and also your shortest route. Because, like you said, you can fly direct from uh, JFK to Ghana to Accra. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. and then what I'll do is I'll give everyone a current quote based on the option. So, mm -hmm. like, right example now, if you're looking to leave uh, with us and you wanted to leave directly from uh, JFK to um, you know, to um, to Accra, the quickest, shortest route, uh, ten hours, you're looking at about fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, if you're looking to take the Turkish Airways route, you're looking at uh, about eight, nine hundred dollars. Uh, and if you're looking to take what we usually do, like uh, connect in Amsterdam, based on the con based on the convenience of the routes so that we have to work across, because we have people coming from every single different region uh, across uh, the U.S. Uh, so you have to, you know, so we route our flights um, to Delta KLM to get everybody to Amsterdam, and that way we can all get to Ghana the night on that same day uh, from Amsterdam to Ghana. And uh, that's gonna run you a lot of times uh, in around twelve hundred or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times it's based on what you're willing to pay and based on 
the convenience you need. And that's the three of many different options out there, um, just to give people like prices and things. And when we package it, uh, the deals work out best. Uh, and I was gonna say. Oh, oh. Just trying to clear, make sure I have a little feedback. Uh huh. I was going to say too. Um, I was going to say. Um. So yeah, because I know, like, I in fact, and you mentioned Togo from Newark, New Jersey. You can fly Ethiopian Airlines direct to Lome. So that's what I'm doing in January. Exactly. That's that's another option right there. So yeah, and, and you have you have so much more new options. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a new route uh, directly on Ethiopian Airways. Yeah, so that's going to be convenient. Also, too, with people, if you have good credit, you could do what I do as well, the credit card hustle, where you do the promotions like with Delta Airlines and Sky Miles, and, you know, first, you spend a certain amount in the first three months, they'll give you like 65000 70000 of Sky Miles. And usually, if you book it ahead of time and enough time, 65,000 miles, because when I go to uh, Ghana this year, I booked it with my Sky Miles, and it was just like 65,000 miles, and all I had to do was pay the taxes. So you have that option as well, you know, uh, if you if you are really disciplined with um, your 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 credit or whatnot. So you get to Ghana, all right. Usually, I haven't been to Ghana yet. It'll be my first time in um, What's up? welcome in, to Ghana <laughs> in, in, in November, but. And this is my experience with some airports or some is more organized. Going through passport patrol. I know when I was in Benin, it was a cluster <laughs> F. Uh, when I was in Tanzania, it was a cluster F. Some countries is more organized. How, how, how do you deal with that process? Because literally in Benin, just to go through passport patrol and how unorganized it was, it was like I was in passport patrol like three hours almost. It was crazy. How, yeah. how do you like? How do you coach your your clients on like? Hey, you know, it isn't like America sometime where you just kind of you know do your little entry form and then you go in and the guys ask you a couple questions of like you know what are you doing? Why are you coming here for? And where are you staying? And that's it. Like how do you tell them like? Look, sometimes it could be a long wait. Do you prepare them for that or? Yeah, we prepare people for everything, but uh, the countries we go to, the, our flow and process is fine. Uh, we're in and out. Um, the La Ghana, Ethiopia, Brazil was no problem. But I do understand what you're, you're, you're talking about. And, yeah, we do have to let people know that at any moment, uh, things, can, you know, things can be a little tight based on people uh, traveling and based on the amount of employment uh, and based on the space. And uh, Ghana, fortunately, has expanded their point of entry. And, you know, so when you come in now, there's a whole lot of visa lines and the process to go through baggage claim is open up uh, and then the you know the walk down is new so mm -hmm. maybe you have your money exchange so that's not bad uh, Ethiopia um, is one of the countries uh, the visa on arrival so myself uh, you know the tour that was being planned for us uh, you know the, the tickets and everything got you know didn't get there on time so I took that option so that wasn't bad I, I wasn't Visa on arrival, and then the people at their visa, we basically got out at the same time too. So that was a, a smooth operation. So, um, you know, but the main thing is uh, we make sure that people are clear and people have things organized. Because once you have everything organized, when you when you start going through this process, it's nice and smooth. So it goes back to what I talk about. We spend a lot of time doing conference call every month uh, and uh, uh, recording it, editing it, and sharing it. Um, that way, everyone can listen to it over and over. And and let's be clear on the whole process. But uh, it's um, once once you you have it clear in your mind, and then you have someone like myself that's well experienced, you're traveling with, that you can just follow. It just makes it uh, life uh, simpler. But yourself as a seasoned traveler, you travel by yourself, and you have to you have to uh, let people know that uh, yeah that um, just because you can do it do it like that is not going to be as simple. For, you know, it may not be as simple for them, and that's why they need, and that's why it's recommended that you know they can just travel with an organized group. Mm -hmm. Now, so you get to the, you, um, you know, you go through passport patrol, you get transportation. Okay, so what can they expect? I know at a lot of these airports, the minute you walk out the airport, you got people bomb rushing you for SIM cards, you know, currency exchange, 
Uh, how should they handle that process? Uh, do you recommend somebody to get a SIM card at the airport off the street or to, especially the money exchange? Um, should they yes. exchange their money in the airport or should they exchange it on the street? Uh, when you first get in, if we have a very small group, like maybe if it's five to 10 people, uh, I would say this, uh, get your money exchange and your SIM card um, once you clear baggage claim. Mm -hmm. you know, but not out on the street, uh, don't pull off to no one. Get you, when you get when you get when you get at the airport, uh, take your bags and you want to go full process to the bus and we have security by us and we tell people keep on going because there's a lot of people and I mean and there's 40 of us. And then we have so we have we have a big coach bus and also we have a, like two other uh, vans and then we have several people that's gonna be there. So you know once you get there, people are tired already. So we'll get everybody on the bus and we just get baggage loaded. But um in Ethiopia that process wasn't bad also. It was, you know, it was like they are, they are expanding the airport. But at the same time too, you and I have also been to some similar countries, but we also have been to different countries. <laughs> and, uh, and everything that we do is a you know, tour aspect. So we have people and representation to make things smooth that we connect with from here to there. So, um, but um, if people can handle it and travel alone and, they, they, and, and it's no big deal, I would say I recommend folks do that. Uh, but other than that, uh, we do like nine and like 12, 13 day uh, tours. Uh -huh. You know, called a journey of a lifetime where you get a little bit of everything. Roots, culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, networking, and just a whole lot of this uh, energy. Yeah, I know with me, if, it's, if I'm going to a country where I've never been before, I usually reach out to a small bed and breakfast and an all range pickup and, you know, having somebody meet me at the airport so they can kind of guide me through all you know, the cluster once you leave the airport sometimes just to be, you know, for some people it might be overwhelming. So I'll do that. So uh, lodging. So right. you get on the bus, you go to the hotel. What kind of, you know, it, it could be a vague question. What kind of hotel options or what kind of lodging options do you offer to your uh, clients? Like me personally, I either stay with somebody I know or if there's a new country, I'll stay at a very small, quaint bed and breakfast, nothing sexy. Um, or, you know, I go to the villages and I'll stay in the village, which I prefer because uh, I'm not really, when I go to Africa, I really don't do the big cities. I might stay a day or two and I go out to the, the villages, to the countryside or what they call the bush and I'll stay out there. What kind of lodging options do you offer for your, uh, for your clients? Yeah, all of the lodging options are uh, two to three uh, star hotels. Um, uh -huh. They're African owned. Hotels, but you know, bigger hotels, because uh, you know you have a group of about uh, 30, 40 people. You need at least uh, 15 to like 22 rooms. Uh, so, um, and then the main thing you're looking for is a home feel. You're looking to put yourself in an organized neighborhood. That way, when your travelers come into the country, they see they see the beauty of the country. They see uh, they see they see you know they see civilized so-called civilization going. Um, and then when they get to the hotel, uh, they feel relaxed. They feel at home and you know, you feel that, you know, you know you're, you're welcome. So, and that's what we do for all of the hotels in our Ghana schedule. Um, the one that we have in, um, so the hotel that we have in, in uh, Ghana that we said is, is the Micklin Hotel. Uh, we've been staying there the last several years. When we go to Kamasi, we stay at Noda Hotel. So mm -hmm. after a period of time you use different hotels, you tend to find your way home. And both of them are a nice home feel, both owned by our Ghanaian business groups. Um, then we go to Cape Coast Elmina, that's in, uh, you know, we stay at One Africa, and we stay at Almond Tree. Uh, you know, uh, these are resorts owned by Africans in the diaspora from, you know, from New York, from Jamaica. And that give you more of like a nice cultural home feel, where it's more like a bed and breakfast, but it's more like a community feel. So the tour feel that we give people, we don't want to give you a bunch of five-star hotels. We give you a nice, you know, nice feel, and then you know, cap it off with you being at a resort you know, in paradise. Um, and I feel like that enhances your journey. A lot of times you do these five-star mega hotels and you get, you get lost out of reality. Uh, and I want my group of people that, we, that travel with us to understand that we're coming to Africa to embrace the culture, reconnect with our people, live, do business, build up. We can't put ourselves in a situation where we stay in our hotels that majority of our people are not going to afford or, or be around and things like that. So. Uh, just try to create a realistic, realistic environment based on what we're pushing. Other people may push something different, you know. So that's why I always tell people before you uh, come on our tour, just be clear that we push 
roots culture, pan-Africanism, nation building, things to enhance them, you know, because our goal, goal is to be a part of the growth and contribution of our development and of the future of Africa. Okay. What, what can people expect uh, for these, uh, for these uh, hotels? Hotel. Like usually. Like usually. Yeah, what you're looking for, a general cost for hotel range is uh, 50 to $100. A night. A night. A night. Um, and um, that's, yeah, so you can get something nice in that range. Okay. okay. I think that there's an echo. Oh, the echo's gone. It's gone. Okay. All right. So when, when people, when they, when they come on the trip, what can they expect as far as uh, destinations, what to do, where you're going to go? Like what, what? What all do you nightlife? Uh, here, here's another question: Do you allow your uh, clients to travel out and venture out on their own uh, when they travel with you? Or do you take full responsibility and say, "Hey, you cannot leave. We all go as a group." Like, how does that work? Uh, perfect. Let, let's talk about that too. Um, and you know, like once again, other people do their tours different, and I'm not knocking other people who hold their folks in a hotel all day uh, after they come in, but. Uh, what we have is our nightlife that's you know usually organized by us. Me and my crew, we you know we'll take you wherever you want to go, and but you know we're gonna watch your back and make sure you have a great time, and make sure you get back safe. And you now we're gonna go out, but we also let people know, realize that we gotta get back up early in the morning, so we're not gonna be out three, four o'clock in the morning. Maybe at uh, you know, uh, 11, 12, and so on. So it's not like heavy nightlife. We're really like socializing. Uh, but if people wanna you know for those who were, you know who are clear on what they're looking to do, you know we can't hold them hostage, but they do have to take responsibility for themselves. Uh, same thing when we do tour days and we out driving around, we have our tour bus ready and it's a full day tour. Usually we leave about 8.30 and we come back about uh, five o'clock. So, and that's, you know, that's, that's time including, so that gives you enough time to have lunch. It gives you enough time to go to different sites like Marine Accra, uh, Kwame Kuma Memorial Park, the Culture Center, W.E.B. Du Bois Center, um, George Padmore Library and the uh, General City Tour. All of that, including lunch, uh, can be done in a full day. And then we have a business conference later on. So that's one of our full schedule. And then after that, we have social nightlife. So for those who want to keep going, they have a full schedule. For those who feel like they can't or they don't want to keep on going, they can just, after dinner, uh, which is about 6 o'clock, they can just call it a night and just rest and relax and stay at the hotel. But what we do more than anything else is create options for people. And then say if you want to do some of your own things, we have different groups of people around us all the time that we can have someone escort you. So we try, to, we try to build it up to where you're clear about what's going on and then make it to where even on the free days, everybody go out on their own and do their own thing because that's the only days we don't have transportation. So we set it to where you get a balanced experience. But, um, you know, this, it's, 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 it's some countries, it, some people may feel like it's dangerous so they want their guests to stay in the hotel and so on. But... In Ghana, it's a beautiful country. We just have to make sure that you're clear on protocol on how to move around and things like that before we just open things up to where you could just you know, move around like that. So it's very protected uh, with security. Okay. Okay. And so usually nine to 13 days, that's what they can expect as far as the length of a tour. Exactly. Uh, how, do you, how are you able to put, I mean, tell, give people an idea of the process or what, how you do it as far as to put this on and put this program together for them like you know how's your process what do you have to do maybe some of the challenges of just logistics of getting 40 different people on the same page um yeah, yeah. It's, uh, i first the first time i had a big group was uh you know my uh, my late 20s when i was in uh in um it was uh october 2007 mm -hmm. uh 10 years ago i was 42 of us and then now it's 40 of us the uh, well, only difference now is that I have multiple tours, and that was just that one tour. But what you do is, uh, is the first thing is just, you know, you write in a schedule, and then you write in a schedule based on your knowledge of that country and where things are, and then you are recruiting your support, which is your tour guide. Uh, you, and the people at the hotel, uh, you, you build certain relationship with them so they're clear on accommodations for your group. You find out what your group eat, and then you order bulk meal per day as far as, you know, buffet uh, dinner. Um, based on everybody's diet. It's, you know, it's organization. So um, you know, you're, you're typing everything in your spreadsheet and you're typing in details as far as everybody route because we have people traveling sometimes from 17 different uh, or 20 different airports. So you have all the routes and you have it worked out with your, you know, your, your, your connections there at the Delta Group Booking. 
and you, you, you're, you're working with them and, and, and explaining to them what you're looking to get for a route and have them plan it for you. And you're talking to your tour guide about the bus route, how you want the bus to route to the country and the different sites you want to stop and see. So it's, you know, it's something that takes, you know, it takes time to develop that. And if you're not familiar with that, you have to get into it sometimes. But my whole life and my work and my uh, career has been around, I've been a, a technical, technical or a technician all my life uh, from, you know, from when I was in high school, I studied electrical and electronic uh, installation and, and, and support. Uh, in military and Navy, I was, uh, did aircraft maintenance and from all the courses, all the, the work, all the process to, to fix and, and, and get things done, as far as all the logistic moves you have to make. And then you know, work for the airlines, uh, did aircraft maintenance, and it's the same process. Uh, you're doing technical work, so you have to study, read manuals, you're doing troubleshooting courses, you're plotting out ways how you're going to fix this aircraft. And now in my modern career as an IT technician, building systems, building websites, it's all of that. You, you, your, your mind is being built consistently to process schedules and how it works and put logistics in flight schedule. When the flight comes, you got to have the bus arranged. You, you're leaving out of this day. You create a book and you type up the entire schedule and you share it with your group and you go through it over with them and get everybody on the same page. And I know this sounds, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds. It's just straight up work every day and you're answering a lot of phone calls and emails and you're being clear with the process of things. So through the period of time, once you get to the tour, everybody's clear, they're set, they're ready. And that's how we process the journey of a lifetime. Okay, what, what should people not do, okay, when either traveling by themselves to Africa or traveling in a group? Like what, what have you experienced that people did that was just like, look, man, this is a no-no, do not do this, or you know, I might have to just throw you off the tour. And to the point where I'll even refund you if you just go away. Like, what should they not do? Yeah, loud outbursts. You're coming on a journey, you're around other people, be respectful of the people that are leading you and, and, and inviting you into the country and showing you the best time and, 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 and making whatever next sacrifice to make sure that you're in good hands. And you know, so make an outburst because you're upset about something. Maybe your room wasn't as perfect as you thought it was. All of these things are respectful ways you can come to the organizers or uh, my tour staff and talk to us and we'll help you fix a problem. Every single problem we have ever had is fixable. The only thing we ask for people to do is to be respectable. So we're big on that. And you know, I'm a straight up you know, military person who believe in, you know, not just because I was in the Navy, but that's my mindset. Believe in, you know, in, in, in protocol and order and you follow directions and you respect the people who are taking care of you and looking out for you. you know? And you know, we don't tolerate any disrespect or anybody treating us any kind of way, talking any kind of way. If we don't care how big they are, how popular they are, famous or anything, we expect everybody to be respectful because it's, you know, cause it's something that we're sharing with our peers, our brothers and sisters. It's more than just a business. We are, you know, we're dedicating our life to give you the best experience in Africa so you can be properly connected, guided and protected versus just, you know, because there's no system to say, this is how you return to your ancestral land. So we built a system and we expect that, you know, our people just treat us with love and respect. If they're not interested in following what we, we have, then, you know, they have other options of people to travel with. But yes, I've given people refund back in the middle of tour, not on the tour, but usually before we leave for the tour, based on the fact that, you know, they just think that this is what they think it is, you know, what I mean? and, you know, it's like respect, you know, it's like, you know, we're serious about this. This is, this is like nation building. This is life and death. And, you know, we can't have a bunch of spoiled people acting like children to where they feel like people are supposed to bend over and kiss them, and, you know, and, and so on. You know, so we, 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 I lay things out on the website and say, these are the details. I go through it and I go through it and I answer questions and I'm clear on things. And if I see a pattern of someone being a person that's just not respectful and not righteous, then we have to just respectfully just tell them that, you know, we can't accommodate you and, you know, and then we'll just you know, refund you back fully. But that really very happens, but it has happened. And uh, because the biggest thing you're looking at, if that person come on your trip and be disrespectful to you and other people, you know, it's going to cause a lot of problems. You know, so, uh, you know, we have an environment that's, you know, because we're about nation building and Ghana is a very peaceful and respectful country, very cultural. You do have things that goes on just like other places, but it's embarrassing when you come and you show your face at the counter and you feel like you can talk to the receptionist a certain way. So I tell people say that, that everyone you see that works there, I don't care if you see them mopping the floor or sweeping, or sweeping up or doing anything, 
they have to be respected at the highest level as a human being, as a person, as your brother and sister. Uh, we're not on this thing where just because you're a director of a major corporation, because we have people come here with very high titles, engineers, scientists, doctors, lawyers, and things like that. And I respect their field in the career work. Just like I expect them to respect mine as an entrepreneur, a director, businessman, a technician, and other people who are or people. You know, so we try to clear the create energy of any kind of caste system and things right. like that. And that way, when you get there, brother, it's like it's like family reuniting. Do all of the hardcore work before you get to that process. So that's how we make it work. So I'm gonna do my for, my first uh, group tour. Hopefully next year, I plan on taking people to Kilimanjaro. Um, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, it's just I usually don't do it because with me, I, it's a little sporadic and sometimes unorganized because I might there might be a, a schedule, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna necessarily stick to it because I might go do something else, and I just don't know if I can be responsible. For you know, four shoot five people <laughs> with five different personalities. You know that's that's my thing. I would probably travel with more seasoned people um, because again, like I said, I'm very sporadic. And as far as the arrangements, living arrangements, like I said, I'll go stay in a village where there's no electricity, just everything's ran off a generator. Like when I go to Dogon country and there's no showers and you're dumping buckets. And, <laughs> Yeah, and some people, and there's no toilet, there's the latrine, the hole in the ground. You know, and some people can't handle that. So but that's, people right there already. If I, if yeah, I, but that's I, how I get down when I go. So that's why not yet I haven't really uh, started. People ask, now, is me going to do some tours? I'm like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know yet. But Kilimanjaro, I'm going to do that. Uh, but it's literally meet me at the airport, meet me at Kilimanjaro. We're going to go to Kilimanjaro. We're going to go up the mountain. We're gonna come down, and then you're on your own. Like that's it. So it's gonna be a four, a four to five day situation, and that's it. It's just one stop. So. so the, um, the in Tanzania and Arusha, going to the national park. Um, right, but see, you have all that, but again, I don't want to be, you know, really responsible or, you know, dealing with tons of personalities because, again, like when you go to the national park, like I did, we just had a tent, and again. It was a, a pretty much a campsite. You know, when I did uh, Serengeti, uh, Gorgo Crater, uh, Lake Myanmar, I think I, that's how you say it. Like, we would just get in the safari car, go to a, like a, a campsite for the most part. You know, you'll, you could definitely hear the hyenas and stuff. You know, they told you at nighttime, do not leave this site because there's wild animals on the other side of this fence. And then, you know, there was literally like maybe two or three uh, latrines and showers for like, I mean, we weren't the only people at the site. There was probably, you know, 50 people. So, you know, like I said, it was more like one of those luxury safaris. You know, it would be different. You know, people will probably want to come and I'm so comfortable hosting them. But the way I do it is just straight basic. So... That's why I haven't really uh, been doing it. So, in fact, next question. Somebody who wants to get into uh, what you do as far as offering a touring business and traveling and taking people with you, how, do you, how does one get started? Well, that is a good question. Uh, oh, because uh, this is kind of uh, a process of, of many things. But uh, to get started, I mean, basically, um, you basically build some kind of level of experience in that country or if you can't then you build you connect with a tour guide or a tour organizer like myself that's going to design a schedule of that country who knows that country mm. and uh, so um you know that's that's a good that's a good start and once you have the package uh you can share it with your friends and family mm -hmm. and then if they're interested you just let them know the cost and the process of how you're going to collect their payments and then you know, airlines and arrangement is done by you know people like myself or the tour guide um, or whoever you, you hire so it's um you know you just really have to reach out to somebody with experience at this moment where uh resources are out there uh there's no need for you to just kind of just try to reinvent the wheel and just go from just trying to figure it out on your own people like myself you know uh even something like i would you know i, I would you know I, I do professional uh services and consultation for a living so even something like that, uh, even if it's not computer systems and it's just someone looking to 
build a business like that, I would sit, literally just work a session with them and explain the ins and outs, even the ins and outs as far as just getting business license and, um, and getting their corporation, uh, which is just basic paperwork, and then just maintain, maintaining that. Uh, it's just a simple uh, uh, process, but nevertheless, you have to just lay it out for them little by little. And um, they just have to be open and realistically deal with the fact that you're responsible for a whole lot of things that, that you, you, you don't have control of, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So things go wrong at hotel, go wrong with flights, schedules, whether you're, you're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. uh, in all ways, uh, people get mad at their, their ex-wife, you're responsible for it. <laughs> You know, it's just, you know, when you're doing this kind of business, you're in the full fledge of this where you become somebody where people may want to use you as a scapegoat because things are not going right. So you got to have the heart and the courage to be about your business and be firm and be clear. And the thing that people respect about us is every single thing is typed up nice on the website and we have video documentation of every single thing that you're going to do. Right. So, you know, so that helps a whole lot. So basically what that does, that gets you all the right people and get you less people that don't need to be on that tour. Like, uh, you know, like say example, if somebody was just a white person from Switzerland, they already know that they say Africa for the Africans and it's not but black people there and that's not their zone. Uh, so, right. you know, so I don't ever get those kind of phone calls. Uh, you know, I do get, you know, one or two people who think they're black and just because they have a black wife or they like, or they have adopted black children. And you, you explain to them that, you know, the peers of people that are traveling, you know, number one, they're going to make you uncomfortable because I've listened to the conversations on the bus and I've listened to when people share certain things. You can't control what people are going to say. I can't, like, you know, and I, some people are straight, this hardcore, and they just, like, they, they'll just say, you know, people press all their life by the same people, you know? Uh, so, you know, they, when they go to their jobs, they know, you know, they experience certain things. So when they're in an environment and it appears, they speak freely. You know, so it's not, it's, so it's an environment if a group of white folks wanted to come, I can put together a tour for them. You know, this tour is just a dedication to my brothers and sisters from African diaspora, just growing up in Jamaica and growing up in America, and then realizing that one of the things that, that we really need as a people is to reconnect to our roots and culture and really build our bond based on all of the hatred, the anger, the violence, and all the craziness that we, you know, that we deal with in, our, in African diaspora. Uh, so it's just a direct dedication. So they may not understand that, but what they can understand is that I can put together a tour package for them and you know, make it work. My tour guide is ready throughout the year to, to accept any group of people. Mm -hmm. Now, me personally, my life is dedicated to recruit my brothers and sisters from the diaspora to come with me so I can connect them into a world where they can possibly live, do business, and be a part of the future of Africa. That's awesome. Let's see if we got any questions in the, uh, Absolutely. In the uh, chat room. Uh, anybody have any questions in the chat room? Um, let's see here. No, a lot of people in the chat room, they appreciate, uh, you know, what you're doing and what we're doing as far as uh, creating a platform like the ones we have for people who are interested in traveling and connecting back to the, uh, to the continent. So, uh, Mimi, when I get to Tanzania, I'll hit you up. It won't be the next... It's different 2018, but I make sure I'll uh, I'll reach out to you. Well, so it's uh, let me see here. As far as so when wicked people expect, I mean, as far as the packages, um, when can people expect to pay? Expect to pay? I know you said you have payment plans as well, uh, and also too, do people understand? you know, that you're offering a service as well when it comes to the pricing. Like, do people try to, oh man, brother, that's too much, brother, that's too much. Or do they understand, like, look, you're paying for a service because you're going to a place you've never been to before. You have no clue how to navigate it. So obviously you have to pay for the service. Cause I'm thinking, you know, a lot of times, especially dealing with us and going back to Africa and the conscious community, a lot of people think, you know, a service like you're offering is supposed to be free. Uh, yeah, people have, uh, people how, do you explain, have, uh, how do you explain to them the pricing and why it's like that, and how much can they expect to pay for, uh, you know, a tour? I know you're going. I know you're leaving soon for uh, Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Like, how much would that program cost? That's perfect. Can they expect uh, the Ghana, Togo, and Benin uh, package is a full 14 days uh, program. Uh, that's uh, airfare from the U.S. Full accommodation there in Ghana, including. Transportation on a luxury tour bus, similar to a, 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 you know, the size of a Greyhound bus, 
and that's taking you around the country and you have a full a staff of uh, people there that's going to accommodate you the whole time it comes with uh you know, your lodging and your breakfast and uh, gourmet dinner and access entrance to all sites uh, business investment conference and then uh, you have people that's going to be around available to take you out and show you around um, so it's it, it's 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 gonna build a cost and you're there for two weeks. So the tour package is, uh, is uh, 3,600. Sorry, this one was 3,800 um, because of the multiple country. And what people do, what you do is uh, you make a deposit, but if you make a deposit like earlier during the month of uh, October, say, um, we'll give you, we'll offer you a discount of anywhere a lot of times from two to $300 off. And then uh, from there on, what you do that that just reduce your price so you can just make an early deposit and then kind of pace yourself from there on okay. right that's actually not bad i mean thirty six hundred dollars fourteen day tour three different countries that's not bad at all absolutely uh, that's not in fact I, I think you're oh, i think you're undercharging bro i think you're under three countries uh we're able to package a deal package a deal based on our experience and knowledge of the field so the more you do this business the more you learn certain things and the more you're able to really build to where you can literally, um, you, know, you know, you can literally just make deals work better. So the next tours that we have is uh, the 2018 tour is uh, Ghana, May, um, uh, Brazil, July, and Ethiopia with optional Tanzania. Um, and the, the Ghana and the uh, Brazil tour is 3,600. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then if you make commitments, uh, the early commitments, which we have uh, current deals off for October, and you can just take that deal and get two to three hundred off. So you end up with a tour package of thirty-three or thirty-four hundred uh, by just uh, making a commitment earlier and then pacing yourself. So these are the ways that uh, we just make the package uh, reasonable. And then um, you know, for those who just want to come in on later, they need to pay the full you know price and so on. So uh, we just try to create as much uh, flexible option, and then then look to get information out as early as possible. Uh, like at least over a year and if possible and make uh, and get people to just commit early and make payments on it so it does work out better and that's how you build a tour group because it takes a while to get 40 people you may get five people this month six people next month and so on and that's how you build it yeah like i said which dude, dude that's not a, that's not bad like the, the what you're offering as far as the the tours and everything all inclusive that's not that's not bad at all i mean my honest opinion so uh, people, everybody in the chat, thank you for, for joining us today, especially on a Sunday at 12.45. I know some of you guys could be watching football and, you know, all that good stuff, watch people get CTE, but instead you guys decided to uh, come and spend, you know, part of your Saturday uh, afternoon with us, and I, uh, I greatly appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Uh, I have an idea centered around helping African Americans invest property and land in Africa. I'm also located in Atlanta. Uh, Tiger Man, go ahead and send me an email and you know I'll get you connected with Brother Bomani as well. Um, but guys, thank you for coming on. Uh, Brother Bomani, uh, you go ahead and close it out. Anything you want to share in closing and also give people your contact information. I'll make sure I'll put it in the description box, but uh, you have the floor. Absolutely, family. Um, uh, based on information I've shared, you have any interest in connecting with me, visit our website to check out our full details at uh, Africa for the Africans org. All of our videos are on uh, youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007. Uh, uh, all of the uh, photo galleries are on facebook.com forward slash Bomani. Uh, you can reach me directly at 404-931-9429. Uh, email address AFTA2010 at msn.com. All right, perfect. And then also, too, guys, uh, search for Uhuru. Uh, if you guys have not subscribed uh, to my channel, please subscribe. Please like the videos. Please share the videos. Um, also, search for Uhuru. The tag name is the same for Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, go to DynastAmir.com. Go to searchforuhuru.com. And then make sure you guys go to Amazon.com and search your name, Dynastamir. Please buy a book. Um, people, thank you for coming on again. I hope you guys found value in this. Uh, no one else is doing what we're doing uh, over here as far as the, you know, the resources, as far as how to travel to Africa, how to do business in Africa, uh, spotlighting Africa. No one's really doing this. So, you know, I appreciate Brother Bomani who's doing this 
uh, full time. You know me, I'm still in corporate America, so you know I do I do what I can. I do what I can, but you definitely have to respect and support Brother Bomani who is doing this full time. So definitely. But guys, thank you for hopping on. Until uh, next time, I'll be back on later on today. Uh, I'm about to go hit the gym and go get something to eat. So till next time, search for Huru the Kafatan Don, Brother Bomani. Peace.